Nick Dwyer here for the 10th inning, giving you another episode of this day in sports history. In yesterday's episode, we saw the NBA's Phil Jackson with the Los Angeles Lakers win his 1,000th game as an NBA head coach. We don't have anything quite like that today, but we do have some NHL to talk about, we have some NFL to talk about, and some baseball to get into. So if you all enjoy this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. This day in sports history. We started today in 1908 in boxing and Jack Johnson would go against defending champion Tommy Burns and Johnson would actually end up defeating Burns in the 14th round after police came in to stop the bout. And with this victory, Johnson would become the first black man to win the world heavyweight title in boxing. Move to the NHL in 1917 and the first defenseman in NHL history would score a goal as Toronto Maple Leafs Harry Cameron would get it. Two years later in 1919, moved to Major League Baseball, and Boston Red Sox owner Harry Frazee would make a secret agreement to sell Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees for $100,000, one-fourth cash, plus $25,000 a year at 6%, plus guaranteeing a $300,000 loan with Fenway as collateral. This transaction would be announced publicly one week later, and the curse of the Bambino would officially begin. Back to the NHL in 1925, the New York Americans and the Pittsburgh Pirates would set an NHL record by recording a combined 141 shots on goal in the Americans' 3-1 victory. Back to baseball now in 1934, not necessarily Major League Baseball, but Matsutaro Shoriki, head of the Yomiuri newspapers, would announce the official formation of Japan's first professional team, the Tokyo-based Yomiuri Giants. This team would be made up of players signed to compete against the American All-Star team, but professional league play would not begin until two years later in 1936. Now we move to the NFL in 1943 at the NFL Championship, the Chicago Bears would defeat the Washington Redskins 41-21 to win their sixth title. Stay at the NFL Championship game in 1954, the Cleveland Browns would defeat the Detroit Lions 56-10. One year later at the NFL Championship, the Cleveland Browns would win once again, this time victory over the Los Angeles Rams 38-14. This would be the Browns' third championship of the 1950s, and it was only 1955. Five years later, go to the 1960 NFL Championship game, and the Philadelphia Eagles would defeat the Green Bay Packers 17-13. From the NFL Championships, we go to the AFL Championships in 1964, the Buffalo Bills would defeat the San Diego Chargers 20-7. One year later at the AFL Championships, the Buffalo Bills would once again defeat the San Diego Chargers 23 to nothing. Moved in 1967 and we have our first Ballon d'Or of the day, and forward Florian Albert would win the award ahead of Bobby Charlton and Jimmy Johnston. Moved to Boston four years later in 1971 and Muhammad Ali would knock out Jurgen Blinn with a right cross in the 7th round in a non-title fight. Back to the Ballon d'Or, one year later in 1972, and Bayern Munich defender Franz Beckenbauer would win the award ahead of Gerd Müller and Gunther Netzer. Moved to college football now in 1975, and at the 5th edition of the Fiesta Bowl, number 7 Arizona State would defeat number 6 Nebraska 17-14. One year later, we had the championship games in the NFL, the AFC, and the NFC, starting the AFC, and the Oakland Raiders would defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers 24-7. Then in the NFC, the Minnesota Vikings would defeat the Los Angeles Rams 24-13. Four years later, moved back to college football in 1980 at the 10th edition of the Fiesta Bowl, number 10 Penn State would defeat number 11 Ohio State 31-19. And we will end today's video off in 1986 in the NHL, and Doug Jarvis would set an NHL record of 915 consecutive games played, and he still currently owns the record at 964. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize, but I'll see everybody tomorrow for Nick Wire and the 10th inning.